Hey everyone, um, this is the segment of the Student Activities Conference Workshop for Theatrical Design that follows my initial segment that helped students make a decision as to where their natural talents might lie. And um, what I'm gonna focus on in this segment is uh, costume design. So I encouraged students who have a natural ability to draw um, especially human figures that costume design may be the area that is going to be um, more fun and um, easier for students that just absolutely love to draw human figures. So the first things I'm going to share some resources and I'm going to share some examples with everybody just to help everyone get started get off the ground. Um, first thing I um, make sure that you have this. Now, I ordered my script copies off of Amazon and they came from all over the country and um, from used bookstores and they were cheap. They were like four bucks. So this is the most recent edition with the most recent artwork and this is the one that's on the, um, the website. This is the same script. The cover art is different because it's just an older publication of the same script. So don't let that throw you for a loop. But the first thing, absolutely, if you haven't done it yet, that you must do is read the script first, first thing. And then it, while you're on Amazon buying things, this is invaluable because um, if you are into anime or you're into cartoon drawings, that is not what you're drawing in this contest. You're drawing... Um, anatomically accurate figures and this book is a must-have for anybody that is doing either makeup design or costume design and if you're one of those students that is passionate about costume design but you're not the best artist ever then this book has step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to successfully draw um, human figures for costume design and it's it's invaluable so these things off Amazon gotta have to start and then I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of how I teach my students to approach the contest um, I'm not the end-all be-all of this this is just what works for my kids and for me so if you have found a different way to do it and and your students are successful then that that's perfect. I mean, there's a myriad of different ways to approach it. But I always have my students approach the um, inspiration board first. So um, I always just spend some time brainstorming and, and, and this year with art being our focus, we took a lot of time and analyzed the script first and we did character analysis and character motivation. We spent a lot of time in, in the script and analyzing what the messages were. And then my next step with most all the kids was to really dig into the handbook where there's a whole lot of descriptions. So if you go into theatrical design on the UIL website and then you go look over both the prompt and the handbook where it describes um, some of the art, art concepts. Those are gonna be so important this year. So my kids spent some time doing some color theory, um, doing a little bit of research on what goes into communicating ideas visually, especially because we don't have an art program. We're, we're a really small school. But that way, when they began to look at the artwork and they began to research the paintings and the art styles online, they understood more what they were looking for. So I would definitely encourage that you spend a little time with your students learning a little bit more about um, art vocabulary because that's gonna be so critical in your um, justification papers. Anyway, first thing is get into that, um, get into that concept and um, I'm going to show you an inspiration board that um, is for Man of La Mancha this year that my student is working on. And um, she was interested in, in this particular style. She's still in, in the process, but she found um, this style, which is cubism, 
and um, all of her artwork from here on out, for, uh, she's actually a marketer, but she's one of mine that's already really um, pretty good into the project. All of the designs that she's going to create from here for her marketing design are all going to be based on, um, on this style of art. So it's going to be important that if you're like me, and I am, um, I am not an art teacher. So I have called on um, some of my friends who uh, have art background to help make sure that, you know, I can Google it just like everybody else, but I have called on um, some friends who have degrees in art who have been able to help me make sure that I'm instructing the kids correctly. So if you're small school and you're not 100% sure what style of art, I would definitely encourage you to reach out to your university resources, or if there is an art teacher on your campus or someone that has that background that can help you and your kids make sure they're on the right track, I would definitely make sure that those beginning steps are correct because you're gonna need to understand that style of art you're going to need to understand what it represents and your student is going to need to, as they design, make those conscious choices and be able to justify those design choices based on this style of art. And of course, the time, the culture, all of that becomes critically important as um, you these students make design choices and justify those choices. So make sure you've got the script. Make sure you've got this to help you make sure that your style is correct for costume design. Make sure that you have done your due diligence, especially if you're like me and you don't have an art background. Make sure that um, your students understand the style that they're drawn to, the style that's going to inspire their designs, and that they can talk about those elements in that particular style of art. That speak to them because of how they see the script. So I wanted to show you something that was relevant to this year, which is why I pulled that, that um, inspiration board that my student is working on. Um, with the emphasis, there are some folks that do their designs first and then go back and do their inspiration boards, and that's been recommended at some workshops. I tend to do the inspiration first. Um, with my students. I, I have them get their, their concepts solid and then let those concepts drive their designs. So this is one from, from last year for a costume designer. And all of the art there is focused on um, what the people look like, what they wore. Last year, um, the costume designer, this was a group design, but the costume designer was inspired by uh, Hopi uh, Navajo and Anasazi Kachinas. And so they were really unique in um, their uh, overall design. And um, they also used the, the Native American jewelry. And so this drove the designs. So making sure that if your student is uh, or making sure as a student, if you are designing costumes, then make sure that your inspiration board is reflective of people. Um, yes, you can have, you know, other things like the, the jewelry, but it needs to be what people were wearing or, 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 or reflective of how that artwork or that design can be applied to clothing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you, here's her inspiration board, and then I'm going to show you the realized designs. So, and we'll talk a little bit about those. Let me see. Okay. Make sure I have all of them here. All right. So here is one of these realized designs. And so it's also nice to have, this student is obviously really artistic. And she was able to, you know, do her own font. But I always encourage just the most professional um, professional display of the student work as possible. And, um, you know, these, you know, if you're wonderfully artistic, you can incorporate some of, you know, your own little design elements in there. Remember to include your fabric swatches in a big enough size that um, it can easily be visualized how the fabrics will look together and against one another. Um, 
keep in, in mind, you know, the basics of art and complementary colors and contrast and, and all of those things so that as you're designing, that you can explain your choices. And so this design was realized based off of the inspiration board and the clothing of those kachinas. And so here is another one from last year. And it's, it's just nice with some different textures on the board, but just consistency and neatness in those realized designs. Um, I've got some of the same artwork from that, um, that student from previous years. And this is one of uh, the group. And these were ones that um, she was able to just design and color and do this all freehand. And she did her own font. So don't hold back on um, really making it your own and adding some of your own unique style and art to your actual designs that makes you stand out. Um, those were all done on sketch paper and um, we uh, used some markers and things that I'll show you here in just a minute. I'm gonna take you back into what I call the studio. We kidnapped the book room and I'll show you what our studio kind of looks like. But this is from several years ago and she designed this one um, digitally, same student. So if you love to, if you have a drawing pad and you love to design on your drawing pad, you can do that as well digitally. Um, my kids like to work in Clip Studio. And the only reason I know that is because this student is what she drew on and she said it was an easy program and it was worked really, really well. And so I ordered it and it's really not very expensive. It runs about $197. Uh, for an individual license. And I think we got a group discount that was about 400 and something dollars for three computers, which really isn't terrible. So this she designed um, digitally. So you can go either way, whichever way is, uh, is your forte. Again, same student. And just adding just some embellishments, some different textures that kind of go along with... Um, the costume design concept that just adds some color and some interest. Again, study color, study uh, texture, study line. Make sure you understand how those things can work well together. Um, one of the fun things that this student always did, and I'll show you this too, she just always added a little touch of herself to things. And this was, you know, her, her concept here was um, flowers and their significance and plants and their significance. So she just sketched some of those flowers and plants that she loved and kind of tied that across all of the designs. Um, here are a few from last year, different students. Again, uh, costume design. So her... Um, her inspiration board focused on people and patterns and clothing and what people would wear. And then she allowed that to drive her designs. Now she designed, she would draw the characters on a, on an, a piece of paper and then we put them together on the display board. And then again, each of the swatches are big enough to show a costume designer what those pieces would look like in a realized garment. Again, same student, different character designs. And again, this was last year where we repurposed different items in order to create the designs. So um, that's just kind of a quick overview. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip my camera around and kind of show you, and this is um, good for um, all the design students, I'll show you kind of what we've kind of gathered together over the years. And it started with just one little shelving unit, and then I've just added to it over the past few years. So I'm gonna flip my camera around here, flip around camera, oops. All right, maybe I'm not going to because I'm 
not technically adept. Um, right here is a mid price range drawing tablet that my students, that I was able to purchase from my students. It's a Wacom drawing tablet. And I think those set us back, they were um, a little bit over a hundred and they connect to the computer and with Clip Studio, students can draw digitally here and then it becomes a digital file on the computer that then they can manipulate. This one has is a little bit more money. This one was over a couple hundred dollars and it has a display here so the student can take the tablet and draw or they can connect to the computer. And again, it runs with the Clip Studio. This is, uh, like I said, a little bit higher end tablet. For those that wanna do all their drawing digitally, this also works great for film if you have students that do um, traditional animation, but wanna do it in, um, wanna do it digitally. And this is the super cheap one. It is a bamboo tablet. I actually got it at a garage sale for $20. I'm sorry, I'm so terrible with my phone. Um, I picked it up at a garage sale for 20 bucks, but these are, you know, these run under $100, 50, 60 bucks. So they're not horribly expensive. It's just making the investment in, um, making the investment in the, in the software that's a little bit more expensive. So this is, um, this is our studio. And we literally took over the high school book room. And I want to show you some, uh, some resources for the students. Um, these are Prismacolor. These are Prismacolor uh, colored pencils. And they are wonderful. Um, I ordered these for the kids. And they take really good care of them. They are great for their renderings. The students also love the, um, what are these, Arteza. Um, they're like watercolor markers, so they're just prettier, and they kind of, uh, they blend like watercolors. Um, basically, I just ha pick up um, sketch pads of all varieties. I keep those around with different... Um, different kinds of sketch pads and paper for different mediums, depending on what a student wants to work in. And then the other thing that I do is collect junk. I mean, I've got markers, I've got ribbons of every variety, yarn, um, different chalks and pastels. Um, you can just see. I, 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 it's just like go to the dollar store, and if you think it looks like it could someday be a set or um, be used on an inspiration board, you know, um, balsa wood, anything, anything that you might use to build. You just start collecting it. And I've got uh, old wigs and costume jewelry and things for makeup and hair design. Um, you know, just access to paints, tons of hot glue. You just start collecting junk. Start collecting artistic junk. And I, I'm not even teasing today. My, my mother sent me just a bag of stuff. And it had all kinds of goodies in it. And I took it all because you never know. And I just add it to my shelves in here. Um, it's... It's important to get and, and keep some, some things, and we'll talk about those in, in set design, things that uh, are needful for scale drawing and for um, cutting, stuff like that. But um, this is just our little, this is our little art area where our kiddos um, work. And then another thing that is good to pick up is um, equipment for photography. This is um, this is set up right now for film, but um, again, just put out there that you have needs and you may be able to borrow. Uh, we have a really nice camera that was donated to us because the photographer just upgraded and did a charitable donation for us. So there's resources out there and somebody may just let you borrow. Um, 
having access to lots of little scrap fabric and things. So I didn't show you, you know, I just have boxes and boxes of, of scrap fabric. And here's another box of just any kind of fabric with unique texture. And I just keep it, I keep it stacked up for costume design. So um, costume designers, make sure the recap, and this was just kind of for everybody too, but costume designers, your recap, make sure you read, make sure you do your research, make sure that, um, that you pick your artwork and that you understand the, how that artwork reflects the key themes of the story and how you intend to connect that to your design work. As costume designers, make sure that as you're picking that inspiration that you stay consistent on your inspiration board with it being, um, with it being costumes, what people would wear. And if you choose something that's not a person's figure that you're um, explaining how that, that is gonna be incorporated into the costume design. I hope this has been helpful. It's just really quick. And uh, my next segment, we're gonna look at um, we're going to look at how to approach makeup and um, hair. Thanks a bunch. I hope it helped.